Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Entrepreneur's Talk supported by Minecraft Advertising, Intel IoT Lab and DTEC. Today we have our friend Sebastian, the founder of Load.me. Hi Sebastian, how Hi, are you? Speak. I'm good. Thank you so much for uh, coming today. I thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Uh, Sebastian, for the people who don't know Load.me, can you tell us more about it please? Yeah, Load.me is the first online marketplace for transporters in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. It's actually an online platform for logistics that okay. uses the power of internet and mobile apps to connect efficiently load owners with transporters that are available within their area in real time. Okay, okay. What, what is your, can you tell me more about the business model here? Yeah, we're actually running two business models in parallel. Mm -hmm. The first one for the marketplace is subscription-based. Transporters will pay a subscription uh, to get access on the inquiries that are published on the platform. Okay. The second business model uh, is that some, we also act as a transport service provider for okay. some corporate customer. Uh -huh. So we're like a broker. All right, all right. They assign to us shipments and then we uh, delegate transporters for those shipments and we manage the payments to the platform and operations and all that. Okay, how did the idea come to your mind? Yeah. How, what was the first thing? How did you move into, mm -hmm. you were, of course you were working somewhere and then you started? Exactly, I was working uh, for a transporter mm -hmm. here in UAE okay. and I was shocked to see that most of the trucks are coming back empty from their destination. Uh -huh. And that's because they don't have a way to communicate with the loads that are around them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I look for a solution and I found that everywhere else there is a marketplace, okay. but not here. Mm -hmm. So I step forward and they build load me. Perfect, perfect. Sebastian, how is Intel IoT Lab supporting load me? Well, I use, the, I use their intelligence because uh, we strive every year to, to invent uh, something new, to stay uh, updated with what's, what's available uh, in the IoT space. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, recently um, I had a discussion with the team from Intel Lab um, about uh, how we can uh, measure the available space in a, in a warehouse. Okay. Uh, you know, that's something that we will need when we're gonna launch uh, the warehouse marketplace. Okay. And we found what's available in the market. Uh, we found also how affordable or when it will be affordable and applicable. Uh, so we plan according to this. Okay. The future okay. is planned according to, to the information that we get from uh, Intel Lab. Okay, Sebastian, tell me what are the plans for LoadMe for the upcoming two years and five years? Uh, the ultimate goal for LoadMe is to bring the marketplace element mm -hmm. in each supply of the line, of the supply, in each connection of the supply chain. Okay. Uh, to give an example, today you can book the truck from Dubai to anywhere in GCC. Mm -hmm. uh, but in uh, in future, uh, once you reach to the with your loads in, in Jebel Ali port, for example, okay, it will be already suggested to you which are the warehouses that are empty and can take the load. Uh -huh. And then further, mm -hmm. which are the ships that have space for your goods to travel further. Okay. Yeah. So now it's, uh, you are moving from trucks, you are expanding, let's say. You are expanding, you are giving, you will be giving additional services in the upcoming two years. Exactly. Okay. What were the biggest difficulties that you faced when you started uh, load me i know you are smiling because everyone will face a lot of difficulties yeah. but as i always say this show is intended for entrepreneurs yeah. and we would like always to give them an advice okay and tell them more about the bad things that happened so maybe they can avoid yeah so tell me more about the difficulties yeah it, it was difficult to get the first mm -hmm. the first customer the first investor the first employee, you okay. know, uh, the, in, to inter, the interview for the first employee is going to be in a coffee shop because sure. uh, your paperwork uh, are still in the process for the office. Sure. Uh, the first uh, customer, you go there empty-handed, you have nothing. 
true. And you have to convince the first customer mm-hmm. uh, to, 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 to trust you. Okay. The first investor, the same. Uh, he's the first. There's no one else who, who put money and trust mm-hmm. in, in you. Mm-hmm. Uh, all these are the first bank account. Okay. You know, the bank will ask, true, okay, true, true. give me your actions from a, another bank. True. I don't have this. The first, so the, the, the first of everything was a, a challenge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's your advice here? Go, any, move. Yeah, you need you need to try. Uh, at one point, uh, you'll succeed. Mm-hmm. You'll break the ice. You'll mm-hmm. get the first customer. Sure. Then the second, it's easier. Then the third is easier. Sure. Uh, the same with the with the employee. Uh, you know, you'll get the first employee. Then the, when the second one will come, there's already a team in place. There's a, a company, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it will grow. Every company was in your in our position true at one point true true uh, tell me more about the competitors you have competitors here in the market or you consider yourself uh, different uh, you, you are offering something new or you have competitors yeah, uh, in in the space of the marketplace mm-hmm. uh, there's no competitors there, uh-huh. there's no other marketplace for logistics uh, okay. yet in the Middle East mm-hmm. uh, but in the second revenue stream uh, the brokerage uh, there is uh, okay. we have brokers uh, that don't use any technology usually okay. they control the market it's a 15 billion True. dollar market mm-hmm. uh, that uh, we're addressing and is controlled by these brokers who don't use technology uh, they still on phones and on 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 emails uh, then there's a lot of friction okay. um, and uh, this is uh, this is the competition this is from where we take business uh, we've also seen a few startups that started to use technology mm-hmm. uh, to address these problems uh, and uh, and uh, but still there's a lot of space in the market as I said True. it's 15 billion mm-hmm. uh, market uh, size and uh, all were fighting to get the, 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 the business from the brokers that don't use technology True. theoretically how do you target them do you target the brokers how do you do it yeah the, we go and uh, we discuss about the challenges and limitations that are given today by their their way of working Mm -hmm. Uh, the transporters market is highly fragmented Mm -hmm. so a large company corporate company will rely on an army of brokers to to ensure of a constant flow of trucks uh, for their uh, factory Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's very difficult in a fragmented market Mm -hmm. that's why a marketplace is needed usually in any fragmented market you'll find a marketplace uh, Sebastian, from what I know now, that uh, you have signed some contracts with big corporations. Tell me more about this point. What happened? How the names? Heck, uh, I would like to know more about this point. Yeah, correct. Uh, we start uh, doing shipments for companies like Procter and Gamble mm-hmm. and Unilever, which are the best, the, the, the biggest FMCGs companies in any given country. Okay. Uh, and uh, they they struggle find a uh, transport supplier in a fragmented market as we have here okay. uh, and that's where load me came in uh, and using technology uh, were shortlisted the best transporters that match their their uh, requirements and uh, we push their orders automatically through the platform and we match them in a matter of minutes okay. uh, with the best uh, 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 transporter that is that has a fleet available near their warehouse in 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 that day when they have the so the so whenever you are dealing with a big corporation, uh, you have someone assigned for this job like an account manager for Unilever or Procter and Gamble because they have more yeah. load and say that do you have someone assigned or you have a support team for everyone who can answer? Yeah. How, how we have work? someone and something. Okay. Uh, the someone is the account manager mm-hmm. and the something is the dashboard. There okay. is a tailored dashboard for each corporate customer. So mm-hmm. when they log in, they'll talk with the dashboard. Okay. Uh, it will show what orders uh, have, have been placed, what trucks has been assigned, what's the, what is the position of the truck. So they rely on the dashboard. Okay. Uh, and if 
uh, that is not enough, then only the account manager, manager uh, will need to step in. Okay, and how are you solving the conflicts? Since you are you don't own the trucks, mm -hmm. okay, and there is a conflict between one of your clients and the the server providers, the, mm -hmm. the, the trucks, the truck drivers, mm -hmm. or how do you solve such uh, yeah. issues? This conflict was there also before, mm -hmm. and just now there's data. So okay. there's no point for a transporter to argue about how much time he spent in the border mm -hmm. while we have the data and we know exactly how much time we spend in the border. Okay. Uh, that's how we resolve most of the conflict with the data that is gathered. Okay. So we compare the data with the, uh, with the, with the, with the claim and then uh, we decide uh, who's right. Okay, okay. Um, do you have reviews about the drivers? Correct. So let's say something bad happened, like it works now with Uber. You know, I don't want to go with this guy. So mm -hmm. you have something like this, right? Yeah, that's the beauty of the internet. Mm -hmm. We have reviews. Okay. Uh, and this is a key element in the marketplace. Uh, so the transporters uh, and the load owners, mm -hmm. both of them, mm -hmm. will review their business partner once a, a business is done. Once a deal is done between. Okay, now let's talk more about the person behind uh, LoadMe, mm -hmm. Sebastian, as a person. Business, we're going to talk about a little bit of your personal life, but in the business scope. The first question is what made you take the leap into entrepreneurship? Yeah. How did you start? Tell me heck, the story. Yeah, when, uh, maybe it's more interesting how I made it the first time because uh, what load me is the third time when uh -huh. I'm jumping okay. from, uh -huh. from a comfortable seat of an employee yeah. uh, to, to this uh, spiky seat of, a, of an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first time uh, when I've done uh, the jump was mm -hmm. scary, really scary. When was that? Uh, it was uh, 2006, okay. uh, oh. back in Europe. Uh -huh. And uh, I, was, I, I, I was doing a great job uh, and I was uh, always looking on how much I produce for, for, for the company mm -hmm. that I work. Okay. Uh, and I, I, was, I was thinking that, uh, you know, I, I get a good salary, like, I don't know, uh, four times more than my parents. Yes. Very good salary for a 24-year-old. Yes. Uh, but there was a but. But I was always looking on how much the company yes. is making uh, based on, on my work, uh -huh. uh, you know? And when you look at that, you're disappointed as a, as a you're disappointed with your income. True. Uh, even if, if it's more, if you compare it with other employees, you have a good impo yeah. uh, income. Okay. But if, if you look at how much you're, you're, you're actually producing for, for the company that you work for, uh, then you get uh, disappointed and uh, you start doing something about it. Okay. Like making your own company, okay. Uh, okay. or, or uh, um, set up a, a, a side job. Okay. Yeah. Was it always you were focusing in your, in your first companies that you started with? Or were you focusing also on logistics, or it was you tried something else? There was three different business in three different domains. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of which was in advertising. Uh -huh. uh, for, for example, okay. uh, my background is in logistics. Uh -huh. uh, I started my career in logistics in 2003 with okay. uh, General Motors. Uh -huh. uh, and in Dubai, I, I continue my, my career when I came in, in Dubai. Okay. And same thing happened again. I started to be an employee uh, in 2011 mm -hmm. in a transport company here. Okay. Uh, was going, uh, everything was going well, mm -hmm. uh, but then I've seen that there's no marketplace in the uh, Middle East. Okay, and so here it was, it was different. The first time you were saying, your mindset, because maybe you were younger, your mindset now is, uh, yeah, yeah. the difference for me now, the first time you were looking at the money, uh, the company is making money, why don't I open my own company and make the same amount? Now, this time you found a gap in the market and you decided to cover the gap. So, but the, the basic feeling was the same. The same. You know, I could do more. Yeah. I could do more. Okay. okay. Uh, for me. 
I want, I want to ask you something here different than uh, what, what I always ask. Do you think the passion or the money? Yani some people, they, they go into entrepreneurship to make more. Some people, they say, I don't want a boss. I, don't, I, I want to be my own boss and I have a passion. I will work it out and then the money will be a result of my hard work. So, are you in between? Where, what, what do you think about this? First of all, I, I want to say you still have a boss. You know who's yes. your boss? Your employees. No. What? No, your customer. Ah, true. It's <laughs> yeah, you cannot be late your when wife. you have a meeting <laughs> okay, so. with your... You cannot be late when you have a meeting with your customer. Mm -hmm. It's same like you're meeting your boss. Uh, you're going to take your best clothes because you're going to meet your customer. Uh, who's going to pay you for your salary? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who? Your customer. Your customer. And so on. So the boss become your cust your customer. Okay. Uh, you know, whatever you think, it's going to be easier. Uh, you're going to have more time for holidays. You're going to say everything. It's the opposite. Then the money story. Uh, you can't think of the money. You're going to, I don't know, you're going to stop being an entrepreneur after two weeks. If you, if you think of, of the money, of the money. Uh, it's like a game. Uh, I, th I think the best way to look at it, to look at the, at, at the game, uh, you know the game is on points, mm. so in this case the points are the money, True. Uh, because that's the, the reward that you get from this game. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, interesting. Sebastian, what is the biggest uh, mistake that you've done as an entrepreneur? Not the biggest, but one of the mistakes that, will, that was a lesson for you that you carry now with you and you apply, you learn from it? Well, uh, I, I made many mistakes. Um, okay. I remember the, the beginning. Uh, I was taking any advice from an experienced guy mm -hmm. and just going back and changing the whole concept uh, of the company because of that advice. Okay. Okay. Uh, later on, I realized that I'm the one who thinks 24-7 of this business and I know all the details and I, I, I should trust my opinion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, more than, than others' opinion. I, I should take in consideration uh, also other advices, uh, but in the end uh, my opinion is the most important and uh, it took me a while uh, okay. to, to understand that. So the lesson here is ask for advice, gather them, but then do your own, follow your heart at the end. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, someone is experienced, uh, will give the advice based on She's his experience, yeah. but he didn't put a lot of effort in thinking all the aspects of your company. You know, he'll think of it for a, an hour or two, the, the, the time of, uh, that was allocated to your discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, but you thought on so many things and on, from so many angles during the night, sleep, uh, during your shower, you always think of your business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the conclusion is, go to the experts, ask them for their opinion, but then go back to your company, it's your baby, no one is in your shoe, follow your heart and do whatever is best for your company. No expert can take a decision. And like you said, if you go to many experts and you apply each and every solution, you keep, you will not work. You will be only doing the solutions. Someone told me something last time. When you go to ask someone for advice and you tell him, I'll give you the example. Let's say I'm lost between this cup and this cup and I go to you and tell you, Sebastian, which cup you think is better? The moment you ask this question, you already have the answer in your heart. I'm that guy. You are that guy. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. When I put the question, I give him two options. Uh, I, 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 I'm already, I already made a decision. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a confirmation. Confirmation. True. 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 Correct. I'm that guy. Uh, there's also other ways mm. uh, to put it. Uh, sometimes I know the answer, and I don't say it. I just okay. put the question and don't give options. Uh, that's when uh -huh. I want that guy to, to do the thing. 
let's say, I mean, a discussion with an, uh, an employee. Mm -hmm. And the answer is obvious. Yes. But I'm just going to put the question, so he's going to say it for the first time. Okay. When he's saying for the first time, I say, yes, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. his idea from that moment on. Okay. And because it's his idea, he will work very hard for it. And mm -hmm. it's not like, hey, Sebastian assigned me something. It's like, hey, this is my idea, idea. Yeah. and he will make everything for it to succeed. Mm -hmm. I'm doing that sometimes. How do you motivate your employees then? Yeah, Give with, me an example. This with one this example. kind of tricks. Uh, with mm -hmm. this kind of tricks. That's not it's hard, tricks, right? It's hard. <laughs> Uh, it takes more time, yeah. uh, but uh, you know, uh, positive motivation mm -hmm. always works better than applying correction. True. Uh, there's a few rules that, that I put uh, for me. For example, uh, these are basic rules. Whenever you do a correction, you mm. do it in private. Okay. Uh, whenever you do uh, a an, an, uh, felicitation, Mm -hmm. uh, then you do it in, in public. Okay. okay. Uh, this is very important. It's, mm -hmm. it's way more powerful uh, like that. And also correction, correction is way more powerful. You'll, you should try it. Uh, this, these are uh, basic rules uh, that, that, uh, that I have. So uh, this is one of, of the things. That, interesting. Uh, it is interesting. Yeah. It should be gamified. The work, the work should be gamified. Uh, it's not, uh, it should not be salary uh, and time, you know. I stay eight hours uh, okay. per day and I get this salary and that's it. Uh, people... But we try don't... to do this, but the problem also is that sometimes you have a lot of work, you don't have the time. This is what happens to me and in my company, is that we decide we're gonna take the guys out, we're gonna do this, we're gonna have that. But then uh, there is a lot of work. Instead of doing something with them, we bring them on Fridays and Saturdays to overwork, and then they are upset. Uh, on short term, mm. it works. Mm. On long term, no. So on short term, it works with pushing people towards doing something. That kind of management is good for firefighters. Yeah, you need, you can't have with them the time to, to, to reward, build yeah. uh, rewards and no, that's, you need to shout on them and that because the fire needs to be put down in a minute. But then, you know, that's how job, how that job works as on short term. Mm. You need to give 200% in the next hour and that's it. After that, uh, yeah, it, they will relax and they will uh, come back to the comfort. Mm -hmm. uh, in most of the businesses, it doesn't work like that. It's uh, more of long term. Uh, relationship that you have with your uh, employee okay. so you need you need to address his other needs not only the salary and the basic needs he needs to be uh, recognized recognized uh, in 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 the community with the, his colleagues his colleagues need to appreciate uh, his work uh, when he's doing uh, a nice work uh, then uh, he needs to be promoted every six months or one year, one year. Oh. they have to see an improvement mm -hmm. uh, otherwise uh, you know it, it will be uh, stuck so even uh, there's tricks also here because there's not many positions in yeah well, companies are small like you are yeah but you can invent positions mm -hmm. if you look at the corporates they do this very well I know there's how many positions are there yeah, yeah, yeah. They invented so many, like Earth manager, uh, junior so. sales, uh, <laughs> senior sales, uh, junior sales manager, senior sales manager, and so on. It goes on and on, uh, and the name of the position should, should be so, something that that he should be proud of, yeah. and so on. Uh, so there's tricks for everything. La, it's good you are highlighting this. Not not every entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs, they don't have time because they are a one-man show and when, when you can afford an employee, you will try to divide the work and so whatever you are mentioning is really important. I think for whoever is watching, entrepreneurs and even for me, it's the first time I never thought about this. Mm -hmm. Sebastian, what do you do to recharge when you're feeling drained on a daily basis and on a weekly basis or yearly? And what do you do? Yeah, I, I, it took me few years to realize that 
the things, some things in the day, will not be finished and can stay for the next day. Okay. Uh, and uh, that's why at least one day in a week, we as an entrepreneur, we need, we need to have this day off, okay. off the business. Mm -hmm. uh, me, I, I, I prefer to spend it with the family. Uh, we choose a place. Uh, every Friday is uh, Friday morning. We go on the beach, mm -hmm. uh, and we take the breakfast uh, on the beach. Okay. Uh, but we uh, we spend the time in the family, uh, not doing uh, big things, small things uh, that that will keep us uh, connected, mm -hmm. and of course it will recharge the the energy for the business. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you know today? that you wish you would have known when you first got started as an entrepreneur? Uh, phew, there's uh, so many things. I, I look back uh, and sometimes I'm laughing of myself, how inexperienced uh, sure. I was yeah. and what mistakes I was doing and how, what stupid things we, we were trying in the beginning. Yes. Uh, the, the, there's many things. Okay. Uh, I don't know, uh, if I could send uh, a, a message... Yeah, to yourself. Uh, yeah, back in time, uh, <laughs> you know, it will exceed the limit of the text. Uh, many things. Uh, but be courageous, mm. it will be one. Try, the, the good, the good will happen. Uh, you know, the, the, the customer will come. Uh, the investor will come. Uh, don't be scared about the negative part. Mm. Uh, don't think that much of, uh, of what if uh, we lose the customer? What if we don't get investment? What if uh, most of the time that things will not happen mm. uh, and just because you worry too much of, of them, you lose a lot of energy and, and trust in yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, that will show if, if you don't trust in your business that will be seen by your employees, by your partners, by your customers. So don't think of the negative. Just always, always Keep consider, consider that only the good things will happen to you. Mm -hmm. So what do you attribute your success today <laughs> or before? <laughs> I still uh, think the success is, is way down the road mm. and we still have but to But you are here long. today, you are alive, <laughs> not as a, I'm, I'm talking as a business, still running, yeah. uh, you have contracts, you have support, you have partnerships. I don't know if it's, yeah. I attribute your success, I think, to yourself. I, 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 I compare sometimes with the startups that started in the same time mm -hmm. and failed. Yeah. Uh, and I see that I didn't took that much risk as others uh, has taken. Okay. So to, to mitigate the, least, the risk uh, was something that took me uh, up to this point. Okay. On the other hand, if I took more risk, I could be somewhere higher. True. Or low. Or somewhere low. So, yeah. Yeah. Or close. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, Sebastian? What are your responsibility as the business owner today? Oh my God, you wear so many hats. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're doing job interviews, so you're the HR mm -hmm. director. Uh, you're uh, meeting investors, so you're the CFO. True. Uh, you're uh, meeting the, the customers. Sometimes they, you know, client servicing, of course. You have the biggest customers, you have to attend the meetings. Mm -hmm. So you're also the sales. Mm. Uh, many admin, many decisions on accountant. Uh, admin uh, has to be supervised by you. Uh, accounting uh, reports has to be supervised uh, by you. Uh, it's good and bad. You know, sometimes uh, the, the things that are not important, I, I just I just don't give any inputs. Mm -hmm. So it will put more pressure for the department or for the, the employee who's who's doing it. Okay. Uh, I will say, hey, however it is, I'm going to send it to the bank, if we're talking about the accounts okay, okay. Uh, report. So you have to review it, because if it gets rejected, uh, then it will be on you. 
Yes. Okay, so so I'd go back now. So when you started, you were doing everything, and then you started recruiting and delegating to win your time back. Did you win your time back now? So now you feel you are focusing more on the business. You are not working in the business. But at the same time, the business is growing. Okay. So uh, to keep up the, uh, the, the pace, okay. again, you need to hire more and the business is growing more and so on. So it's a never ending story. You have to get used to it. Do you, do you delegate a lot or no? You want to no, micromanage? I, I delegate. You I delegate? delegate. I okay. have, yeah, I have to delegate and I delegate uh, even more than is, is necessary. It takes more. Uh, to delegate something for the first time. It takes more True. than doing it yourself. True. Uh, but then, if it's a problem that, and most of, most of the problems will occur, uh, occur again of in uh, some time. But then second time when the problem comes, it's easier to delegate. You just forward the problem uh, and it will be fixed by the, pro by the person that you train uh, before. True. Uh, it, it's hard in the beginning, uh, but then it, it starts to make sense. Mm -hmm. As one guy was saying last time, you should literally buy back your time. So, for example, you are spending five hours per week on accounting, and you can get an accountant part time for one thousand. And in these five hours, you can make business of ten thousand. Then, better to buy your time and giving this job to someone for you to focus on your expertise. So, I think. Both of us we are passing through the same now. Mm -hmm. new, new employees delegating and this. Because I would like to know because some people they over delegate and they say, "This is the job, go do it, find your uh, do it yourself, find uh, a solution. It's not my problem." Some people like me, I want to even though I delegate, but I interfere again. Mm -hmm. Do you do this? Do you want? I interfere as well. Uh... In a way, I admire the people who over delegate. Mm -hmm. uh, it will, the service quality will be affected. It, that company will not have the best uh, uh, quality service. True. But it will be scalable. Yeah. It will be health of mm -hmm. a scalable. So mm -hmm. That company will grow up fast uh, with a low level of service, but it will grow up fast on on let's say on, on horizontal will grow mm -hmm, more. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't delegate, then the company will, will be more on, on, on uh, uh, vertical. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, create, you create many companies in your company and you deploy them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more departments. And yeah, but this, this is the role now, I think, after that, this, the second step, I, I want to wrap it up in a way. Mm -hmm. So also for whoever is watching, the thing is you start as a one-man show, juggling all, wearing all the hats, and then you start recruiting. This is the second phase after one, two years. You start delegating, but you have to keep on managing and doing your thing. The second step, I think, after that would be to hire a manager to work on this team to do your job. And this is when you can deploy another team with a new manager, and this is how you yeah. can scale, I think. This yeah, is I the, your goal is to make it work by itself, you know? Yeah, make it so work you by can itself. focus There are on ways, one of the ways mm. is, is to have a manager, you give some equity mm. to that manager, and you clone yourself in, in him, you make him uh, uh, work for the company as, as it is his company, because you, you put that uh, uh, equity into his uh, pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, there's tools to make that vested over the years and so on. Sure. Uh, uh, but it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, it, it will need some years mm -hmm. of your training first, and then you apply the training to, uh, to the manager. And uh, still, maybe it won't work. At the same uh, at the same quality uh, that it worked before with you, uh, but it's scalable. You can then think of the next big thing sure. and open the next uh, the yeah. next revenue stream in uh -huh. your company, and you set up there a new team and so on. And this this uh, branch will work by itself. 
-hmm. Sebastian, if you had one piece of advice to someone who is just starting out, what would it be? For the uh, entrepreneurs, need, they need to make sure that they are an entrepreneur because it's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. It's very tough. Okay. Uh, there's so many problems that comes on you. You have to deal with them in a relaxed way because mm -hmm. uh, otherwise it will kill you, literally kill you. True. So you have to find out before you quit your job that you're an entrepreneur. Maybe you start working on your idea in the afternoons mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's how you find out. Um, maybe between two jobs uh, you'll start doing uh, the idea. Uh, somehow, the first time when you jump uh, into, into this uh, rough road of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a scary thing. Mm -hmm. So you believe that there are people who are entrepreneurs and people who are not. Yani it comes with the character, the personality of the person. It's not something that you can acquire. This is what you believe it's in. It's a thin line. Uh, I believe for some, it will be very stressful mm -hmm. to be an entrepreneur. Okay. And I don't advise. There will be so many conflicts around them. If, if they will not have a, a, a minimum level of comfort okay. in, the, in the entrepreneurial uh, position. And what about, uh, there is something, uh, you have many people who have great ideas and they say they jump directly. So uh, what is the advice? I want the advice that you will give to people who have an idea and they want to jump. What are the weapons they should... Uh, the, the idea is nothing. The execution is mm -hmm. what matters. Um, I, I advise them to think on every detail and they are the one who will decide to jump or not to jump. It's good to jump even if you fail. I, I, we should not be happy that we fail. It's not wrong to but fail. But it yeah. will prepare you for the next mm -hmm. jump, mm -hmm. which might be the one which is successful. That's how it was in my case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Sebastian, I want to thank you so much for coming today. It was a great talk, really interesting for me, and I hope it will be interesting for whoever is watching us. Um, it was I, a pleasure for me as well. Thank you for the invitation. Thank I'm you. looking forward for the, for the second next one. round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we sure, surely will do. And we want to wish you all the luck in your business and personal life. Thank you. And I we'll need see you again. I need it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Same for Thank you. you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching our episode of Entrepreneur's Talk. Please make sure to visit load-me.com to know more about Load.me and the services that they are providing. Thank you so much and see you next week.